Meow. 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 <laughs> Kitty cats. So, good kitten internet. Um, I'm hopefully going to keep this one fairly short. I'm trying to make sure I go to bed at a reasonable time because I'm going to be heading out early tomorrow. Um, yes, it's soon. So that's the reason why I'm not bothering to edit this video. I'm going to try to do this all in one take. I'm actually uploading yesterday's video now. Um, I didn't get a chance to remote in from work to quickly start the upload. So I wanted to cover a couple of things. Don't mind me, I'm just walking and talking. Um, just wanted to give a slight update on the computing turducken. I'm not going to get a chance to work on it tomorrow. It's the reason why I was not trying to um, schedule it every Saturday. I was just planning on working on it every weekend. But I wanted to show off a couple of things. Um, first off, so this is my temporary setup over here. I have it hooked up with Lego. So this is the Raspberry Pi. This is the Nook. This is the Thing Client. And I want to talk briefly about what Thing Clients are. So I will actually take this with me, even though I just bought this one over here. And let's head back. So these are Thing Clients. Thing Clients, for a frame of reference, are machines that I think I briefly mentioned this before. But they're effectively machines that are, um, well, hold on, let me set this down. And I'm going to try and, oh, no, I'm just going to hold. So, Think Clients are machines that are primarily used to connect to other computers. So, those of you that, I mentioned this before, but those of you who have been around longer may remember dumb terminals, which are, well, terminals that you connect to a central server that don't actually have any compute power to them. That's basically what thin clients are. They do actually have compute power, but it's far more limited compared to what they're connected to. This is a fairly typical thin client. This is a broken thin client, for reference. Um, I borrowed it from work because, well, it's broken anyway, and I wanted to see if this form factor would work for my project, which it did. The problem is that this thing client itself doesn't work for what I need. So thing clients are frequently one of, modern thing clients, I should say, are frequently one of two architectures. Either one, they are um, ARM-based architectures, so think of it like the processing power in your phone or tablet or something like that. Or two, they are what's called x86 architecture. Um, x86 being what a standard Intel or AMD based computer is. Uh, usually they're really crappy x86 architectures, which is very important for what I want to use it for. So this particular thing client is x86 based. Um, Performance-wise, this performs about as well as a computer from about 15 to 20 years ago, which is exactly what I want. So the point of the computing turducken is to have a bunch of computers inside of themselves. Um, that was the original point. Uh, the current version is just a bunch of computers inside of a computer. I could still do the nested computer thing, but it just takes up too much time and effort. Maybe I could do that some other point, but I'm not going to worry too much about it. So, this particular thing client here is made by a vendor called Wise. Um, Wise is currently owned by Dell. They are the most popular thing client vendor, I guess you would say. And, well, you can tell from how small this thing is, the fact that it hit, fits in my hand. The motherboard on this is really small. It's mostly what you see on the case. I didn't prep this in advance, or maybe I did. I did! Sweet! Okay. It was a little stuck, and this is not easy to get out with one hand and the other hand holding my camera. I should have been smarter about this and prepped the camera to be on a tripod. That way I'm not holding it. Right, Isin? Right. I even have a tripod not that far away, but I have to screw the thing on the bottom, and I'm trying to do this all in one take. This is a bad idea. 
I should not be trying to do this in one take. I should... Anyway, so this is what the inside of a thin client looks like. This is a fairly typical thin client form factor. It's tiny. And notice, again, it fits in the palm of my hand. Um, underneath this copper section here is the CPU. It's a very strange heat sink, but it's basically a copper heat sink. Um, down below this empty spot here, that is the RAM. Uh, it uses standard computer RAM. Some thin clients have it soldered on. These do not, which is important. And this thing over here, right here, this is the storage, or the DOM disk on module, I believe it's referred to. And there's a battery right here. Um, Chipset for the motherboard down there. You can see where the USB ports are on the inside, headphone jack, microphone, video output. Anyway, um, since this performs about as well as you would expect an older computer, you can use them to run older operating systems. And that's the important part for what I want. So there's a problem when it comes to running older computer stuff. Computer components die. Specifically, capacitors, which there's actually not really too much in the way visible here. But um, here, let me show you on the one that we're actually going to be using for the project. So all of these little black circ uh, circular things, those are capacitors. And capacitors die with age. This is the thing that happens. You cannot prevent that from happening. The most that you can do if something dies is replace it. I can't solder, though. So I needed to try to find the newest crappy thing that still worked with Windows with the versions of Windows that I was intending. And in my case, I am aiming for Windows 98 and DOS. DOS is actually the easier of the two. I can actually run... I can run free DOS on a modern computer, and it would work just fine. I'm not too concerned about that. What I'm concerned about are the other components, specifically audio. And that's actually where this thing failed. Oh, that's right. I have it fully prepped where I could just take it out. That's where this thing failed. Um, the audio on here only supports Windows XP and newer. Uh, they just literally never made drivers for anything else. Uh, no, wait, no, sorry. The drivers actually do work in Windows 98 on this, and I could probably make it work with DOS, but it'd be a bit of a stretch. The problem for this one was the video, not audio. Um, there are no video drivers for this thing client and Windows 98. Their oldest driver was XP. That doesn't help me. Um, I needed something that ran XP. This thing client does. So, um, this thing client, I don't remember where I put the case. I'll show that in another video, but, um, this thing client actually runs Windows 98 perfectly fine. It has driver, all components have drivers for Windows 98. Um, it has audio, sort of. Um, it has audio that works with Windows 98. It has a disk on module, which I've already removed, and that's the reason why there's this ribbon cable here, is that this is an IDE cable. It's the type of cable that you used to have for laptop hard drives, um, older style laptop hard drives. And I have plugged into it, that is a laptop hard drive style to SD card slot. So that's a normal 16 gig SD card. And that's actually what's going to be running Windows 98. Or DOS. Uh, in addition, let me try to show some other features. We've got the RAM down there. Um, that was the thing I had to replace in this thin client because... I was making sure I was zoomed all the way out. Um, the RAM that was in here before was defective, and I had actually contacted the eBay seller that I bought this thing client from, told them, hey, look, the thing's not powering on. Uh, can I have a refund? They refunded my money, and that's when I found out it was just the RAM. So I contacted them back again, said, hey, look, on further testing, it was just RAM. I feel bad about getting refunded for something that does work. How about a partial refund instead? So I originally paid $18.99 for this, or $17.99, sorry. I paid $17.99 for this thing client, and originally was refunded $17.99, then I sent via PayPal 13 bucks. I figure five bucks off for a dead stick of RAM and the time that it took me to figure out what was wrong, that's probably worth it. 
anyway, um, this massive metal heat sink, there's a CPU under there. Uh, the CPU is a via 1 gigahertz CPU, I want to say. Um, when we actually do the software, I'm not going to have time to plug it in tonight, but when we actually do the software, I'll get into more details as to what it actually is. But it's a 1 gigahertz processor, and it performs a little bit worse than a Pentium 3, which is fine for what I want. Um, this machine will basically perform, without me making any changes, it'll perform about as well as what would have been on the higher end of what was released with Windows. Not absolute highest, just higher end, which is kind of what I was aiming for. Um, from there, you can do things in software to be able to disable cache, uh, make it act like it was slowed down to be able to run much slower things in DOS. So this piece of hardware is actually really versatile. It lets me handle anything from late Windows 98 games. Actually, technically it would handle XP games, um, but XP not very well. It doesn't have a good enough onboard graphics. Um, so it'll handle effectively Windows 98 era games all the way down to DOS era games for... We'll go until you get to mid-80s. Well, we'll be generous until you get to mid to late 80s. If you go old enough, you actually need things that are very precisely timed, and it's really hard to get it working outside of original hardware. But the more important part is that none of the capacitors are broken, and this is a much newer thing client than purchasing a Pentium 3 would be, for instance. Uh, this thing client was built in, I want to say it was 2007? 2007? 2007? 2008? Can I find a date on this somewhere handy? 2007. This was built in sometime in 2007. Uh, the I'm seeing it there. You sh might be able to see it there. There's a marking under 07. It's upside down. I can rotate the camera. Whee! Yep, now you should be able to see it. It was right side up, wasn't it? Sorry, my brain sometimes flips things upside down for no reason. So, um... This has 512 mega RAM, which is about the most that you would want to put on Windows 98. It has PS2 slots, which is rather convenient for DOS. Um, USB should work fine, though. I'm not going to bother plugging anything into USB. Now, this has two features that I specifically wanted on a thin client. The first is the white port there. That is a DVI port. You probably have something similar in the back of your computer. DVI ports are very important because the entire Turducken setup is going to be using HDMI. DVI and HDMI are pin compatible, so I can use a simple adapter that doesn't require any power to go to HDMI, which is what I want. The second thing, strangely enough, is the parallel port. So there's two things that I want from this parallel port. The first is that I actually have a zip drive that I'm going to see if I can try to get to work. I'm not very optimistic on that, but I've always wanted to try to see if it would work. The second thing, and the more important thing, is something that I'm planning on ordering toward the end of the month, and that is a parallel port-based sound card. You can find a few YouTube videos online about this. It's a OLP... Oh, I don't remember the full acronym now. Anyway, it pretends to be an ad-lib sound adapter. Um, not really pretends. It actually has the correct chip. It's just not an official branded one. The software patents have long since expired on these. But basically, you can make certain DOS games just use audio through it. The audio that's built into this doesn't work in DOS normally, so this is a way around it. And it works with most DOS games, not all. Some DOS games will need patches for it, and there's one DOS game in particular that I don't know how I'm going to get to work yet, and that would be Daggerfall. One of my goals for this project is to try to get Daggerfall working. We'll see how well I can make this happen. So yeah, I just wanted to give a... Oh, other features. So this thing by my thumb. This is... Uh, this thing. This is a daughter board. Um, that's what I was pointing at with the date thing. This is just a socket, and it has some pins sticking up that you plug this daughter board into. Um, the daughter board itself has two things on it. One is a PCMCIA, PCMCIA card slot. PCMCIA card slots are what was used in laptops for expandability. So I can add things onto this. For instance, I can add on a network adapter. I mean, this thing already has one, but I could. 
Um, but more importantly, I can add on a game port, which is what joysticks used back in DOS and Nanax era, before USB gamepads became more popular. And the other thing it has is an SD card slot. Now, I couldn't get the SD card slot working for booting purposes. And I don't know if that's just because of the wonky order that it's in or what. That's the reason why I have that other one through a cable. But I'm going to try to figure out if I can get it to work. Because it'd be really nice if I could have two devices and not one. So, there you have it. It's my hardware summary of the second device that will be on my computing introduction, the Thing Client. Um, next video on the computing introduction, I'm going to focus more on the software side, configuring things, and also actually installing it into a computer. I didn't have time to do that tonight. I'm really tired, and I just want to sleep. I've also had some really bad mental health day fun this day. Um, I probably shouldn't have gone into work today, but I did. So I kind of need to recover from that. Tomorrow's video will be a little more interesting, I think. Um, I'm not going to use this camera that I'm holding. I'm probably going to use my cell phone. But I am going to the Midwest Gaming Classic tomorrow, which is held in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. And I've never been. It's been a long time since I've been to a new convention, so we'll see how well this works. Also, classic games, even pinball. Pinball. I am not good at pinball anymore. So, yeah. Have a nice night, Internet, and I'll talk to you tomorrow.